So there's this chicken and the egg argument that I keep bouncing back and forth in my head. Is it that our government doesn't represent us, it's just completely corrupt and unworkable, etc.? Or is it that the government actually represents us perfectly and that on the whole, Americans are terrible people? I ask this because there's a slew of things that you can find over what in the fuck has Obama done so far dot com, which we progressives were against when George W. Bush was in office, but now that it's Obama that's doing them, we turn a blind eye. Things like successfully protecting Bush officials from prosecution for torture, arguing that widespread use of Predator drone missiles to assassinate people is a justifiable form of self-defense, that the executive branch has the authority to assassinate United States citizens when they're abroad, reversing his promise on Guantanamo, promising to keep it open indefinitely, affirming opposition to same-sex marriage, announcing $8 billion in loan guarantees backed by the federal government to promote the building of new nuclear power facilities, prosecuting people using evidence uh, that was obtained through torture, granting 27 waivers to oil companies that were illegally drilling in the weeks prior to the Deepwater Horizon, and then dragging his feet for months to hold BP accountable, doing absolutely nothing to prosecute the crimes of Wall Street, and in fact actively blocking criminal prosecution of Wall Street criminals by forcing out-of-court settlements, overseeing the operation of a CIA black site at Bagram Air Base where Red Cross observers reported uh, detainee abuse, fighting for and winning the right to deny people habeas corpus, blocking UN human rights investigators from investigating uh, Guantanamo Bay, launching FBI raids against anti-war groups in Chicago and Minneapolis, dropping charges against the CIA for destroying evidence of torture that they'd committed, deporting more illegal immigrants in his first four years than George W. Bush did in his first eight, continuing the Bush policy of kidnapping people and then moving them into CIA black sites in other countries so that they can be tortured, blocking the release of photos documenting torture and abuse of detainees by the United States military, refusing to sign a, a treaty banning the use of landmines, continuing the practice of indefinite detention, made government less transparent than ever, blocking more Freedom of Information Act requests per year than George W. Bush, cut a secret deal with GOP leadership to kill the public option, all the while publicly campaigning for it, defended Don't Ask, Don't Tell from being prosecuted in the court, used the state secrets defense to protect Bush administration officials from being prosecuted for war crimes, extended the USA Patriot Act without making any changes to it at all, and then had the nerve to complain to his staff that the Democratic Party's activist base were a bunch of whiners. And yet, in despite of all of this, progressives still somehow managed to cling on to this delusional fantasy that somehow Obama is still on their side. That is the textbook definition of delusional fantasy. If this is an evidence of voters having a mental disorder, I don't know what is. And so now all the people who are watching and advocate not voting are all standing up and cheering, but don't be so quick to cheer because you are equally part of the problem. Instead of getting out there to gather signatures to get better candidates on the ballot, you're sitting at home doing nothing because you're intellectually lazy and it's easier for you to sit at home and just say, eh, fire on all of them, just be a cynic, than actually doing any fucking work. Most Americans are like you and don't vote. So they leave it up to all the idiots who vote against their own interests. They leave it up to those assholes to decide things. Of the eligible voting population, most of the time, only 40% vote. It's even less in off presidential years. Consistently, they vote about 20% Democrat, 20% Republican, with between two and three percent voting third party. Eligible non-voting Americans make up a majority with 60 percent of the population, but they don't vote. Now, armchair activists like Noam Chomsky keep advocating for this false dichotomy that your options are either voting for the Democrat or staying at home and not voting. Now, not voting has been used successfully in Soviet bloc countries to protest elections as being illegitimate, but that's only effective there because there were laws on the books that said that if voter turnout was below a certain amount, that that was taken as a, as a no-confidence vote, and so a new slate of candidates would have to be nominated and voted on. There are no such laws here in the United States. If everybody except for one person voted in the next presidential election, that one person would decide the election for everybody else. Not voting is the fucking dumbest thing that you can possibly do in the United States. Now if all the cynics and anarchists could band together and, and decide to vote for somebody who can't win, that person would win in a landslide. So on the one hand, we have people who are voting for terrible people in both parties. 
And on the other hand, we have people who don't like any of the terrible people who are running, but are unwilling to do any of the work to get better people on the ballot. So you know what, it really doesn't make a difference whether you keep on voting for the same fascist assholes and suffer from partisan Stockholm Syndrome, or if you're just an intellectually lazy cynic. Because either way, you have the government that you deserve. Our government sucks because you suck. I'm the Punk Patriot to life, liberty, and pursuit of a less fucked up government.